Hello and welcome to day seven of 30 days of Photoshop. Today we're discussing the difference of two of our main adjustment layers, levels and curves. Hello and welcome. Today we're discussing levels versus curves in Photoshop. Now, basically these are the two most commonly used options for adjusting light as well as color. And they're really, really similar. We get a lot of questions. Hey, what's the difference between levels and curves? So today we're going to show you everything that you can do with both levels and curves. We're going to show you all around the key differences and how they relate to one another. So starting off with our sample image here, you can actually download this and follow along. Just click on the link right down below. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my panels a little bit. I wanna make my layers panels visible, but I also want my adjustment panel visible at the same time. So we're gonna click and drag this and dock right over here. Boop, just click right there. And I want my properties panel to be visible too. So I'm gonna click and drag this all the way to the very bottom and dock that right over there as well. So we're gonna see our layers. We're gonna see our adjustments and we're gonna see our properties all at the very same time. And here's our sample image for today. So we're gonna start off at the very top. You can see with our adjustments, we have our levels and our curves. So let's go ahead and start off with levels, opening up our levels. And we can see here in our property window, all of the properties for our levels. Let's go ahead and bring that up just a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and talk you through this levels adjustment, but basically what levels and curves do are allow you to edit the light and the color of your photographs and they're super super powerful so here with our levels adjustment basically we have two different graphs we have our input levels at the very top and then we have our output levels at the very bottom starting off with this left hand slider as i click and drag this from the left to the right this moves what's called our black point it takes any information that's to the left of this point and makes it completely black if I click and drag from the right hand side, this will move our white point and it takes any information that's to the right of this point and makes it completely white as we can see in our image. Now, usually what we're doing is moving this center point here and that's going to make our midtones either darker or brighter. There we go. So we can see if we want our image brighter, this is a great way to do that. You can reset any of these little tabs. All you have to do is go right down here to your reset icon. So we just talked about the input levels on the very top. Now we're gonna talk about the output levels. The output levels will take the blackest point in our image and make it brighter. So as you can see, instead of having pure black, it's moved to a lighter gray. And on the right hand side, this is gonna take the whitest point of my image and make this a little bit darker. Now the thing to note here is that you can actually move all of these sliders independently and use them all together. So for instance, if I wanna make my darkest point of my image a little bit darker, I wanna move the black point, but instead of having it be all the way black, I can make it be gray, I can do this to create kind of an interesting color effect. And my white point will allow me to make the lightest part of my image a little bit darker. Now I can go ahead and reset these sliders at any time. All I have to do is right down here, click on my reset slider option and everything will go back to default. Okay, so we've kind of seen how each of these different sliders look. Now what we're gonna do is open up a curves adjustment layer and show you how to access all of the same stuff within a curves adjustment layer. So we're gonna go right up here to the very top where we see our adjustments and open up curves. Fantastic. Now you're going to see my graph looks quite a bit different, but it actually functions in a very similar way. Starting off with this point here on the very bottom left. If I click and drag this point and move this to the right, this moves my black point. And as you can see, anything darker than this area becomes completely black. Now that might really ring a bell because here in levels, this is the exact same thing as doing this. Okay, let's go ahead and reset that, go back to our curves and reset that as well. I can take the same point and click and drag this up. And that does the exact same thing here in my levels as bringing my output levels a little bit brighter. You can see basically they look like they're doing the exact same thing because in fact they are. Let's go ahead and reset that and we'll, we'll go click on our curves and reset our curves. So now we'll go to our white point. I can click here and drag this down, making the lightest part of my image a little bit darker or I can click and drag this to the left and making my white point, all the information to the right of this slider will be completely white. So by clicking this point and moving it either right or to the up or down, clicking here, moving this left or right or up and down, it literally does the exact same thing as moving this point, 
moving this point, moving this <laughs> on our levels, and moving this on our levels. So you might ask yourself, why would you even have both of these? Well, there's one key difference between curves and levels, and here it is. With your levels adjustment, let's say you wanted to move your midpoint. I can make this midpoint lighter or darker, but I'm not able to add individual points here around my midpoint. Now, we'll go ahead and reset this, and then we're gonna go into curves and show you the main key difference. Curves, instead of having a midpoint by default, you actually click here, and then you could drag this a little bit brighter or a little bit darker. So if you're going from the center and dragging this darker or a little bit lighter, that is very much the same thing as taking your center point and dragging it darker or a little bit lighter, okay? However, where the curves are a little bit more different is that you can actually move this curve and make your, keep in mind down here, this is your dark information and up here, this is your light information. So I can add a couple points. Let's start with a very basic, what's called an S curve, okay? So in this case, what I've done here is I've actually taken my darks and I've made them a little bit darker. But at the same time, I've made my brights a little bit brighter. So instead of having with levels, just one control in the center between black and white, here in curves, now I've added two controls between black and white. Now I can take my darks and I can make my darks a little bit brighter and I can make my lights a little bit darker as well. So I'm actually reducing the contrast of my image. In fact, I can do this as many times as I want. If I wanna go ahead and make this point a little bit brighter here as well, I can do this throughout my image. Now, the nice thing, of course, it's not always a bad idea to be always clicking and dragging with this graph. Let's go ahead and click on the reset icon. There we go, reset a couple times back to default. This icon here is actually really nice because instead of clicking and dragging along this graph, I can click on any one of these points and it's going to find that light level along the graph. So if I click over here, you can see my light level moves over to the right hand side of my graph. Keep an eye right over here and you can see my light level moves to that side of the graph. So if I click here and drag down, I'm gonna make those bright areas a little bit darker. And if I go right over here, I can make that a little bit lighter and I can go way down by my really dark areas and I can make those a little bit lighter as well. So by using this icon, I was able to create a few different points along my graph that now completely adjust the brightness of my image. Okay, let's go ahead and click on reset and we're gonna show you more similarities between these two, choosing your black point, your midpoint and your white point. So you're gonna see a couple eyedroppers here with each of these tools, your black point, your midpoint, and your white point. You'll see this here in your levels as well, black point, midpoint, and white point. So if you choose your black point, let's say you click on this and you wanna make sure that this guy's jacket is completely black. Go ahead and click there and it's going to adjust your entire image to make sure wherever you click is gonna be completely black. Now you can click here on your white point and you say, maybe I want these clouds to be completely white. I can click there and it's going to become completely white. We're gonna click on our midtones. Now, with, when you click on your midtones, it's actually gonna adjust your color as well. It's gonna to try to do a white balance. So for instance, if I click here, which is a little bit yellow, it's gonna kind of turn our image blue because it's gonna to try to make this area a perfect 50% gray. So that midpoint is really used for white balance. Okay, now let's go back to our levels here. We're just gonna make sure we reset. Here in curves, you have the exact same options. So your black point, I can click here on my guy's sweatshirt and make that completely black. Okay, I can go to my white point, click here on the background, and then my midpoint, I could click right here, and you're gonna see it's gonna do the exact same thing. So basically, levels and curves are very, very, very similar. The main difference is that here with your curves, you're going to be able to move any amount of variation here within your points to control the visibility of the lights and darks in your image. So up until now, we've been doing everything with light and dark information. We haven't taken a look at color at all, and that's really the next step for getting more advanced with both curves and levels. So let's go back here to our levels. So I'm just gonna reset our curves. So let's go back to our levels and reset those. Here at the top, you're gonna to see RGB. This stands for red, green, and blue combined, and that's going to make sure it just adjusts your light. However, if I click on my red channel, now each of these sliders is going to work with my red channel. So if I click here and drag from the left to the right, it's going to reduce the amount of reds in my darks, okay? And the opposite of red is cyan. 
On the right hand side, it's going to increase the amount of reds in my lights. Okay, so it's bringing more red into the light areas. And in this middle slider, we can push towards red and towards cyan. Let's go ahead and reset that. Now here on the output sliders, this is actually going to, let's make sure we go back to our red channel. This is going to put more reds into my shadows and more cyans into my highlights while also darkening my highlights. So each of your different color channels now works independently. I can use these to completely color my image. Now, if you're planning to just do a general color balance in Photoshop, this is not the most intuitive way to do that. In my opinion, using the color balance adjustment actually is a lot more intuitive and this is what I would suggest. So for instance, if you wanted to take your midpoints and you wanna push them a little bit more towards red and you can push some more magenta and blue, this is actually the same exact thing, by the way, using this color balance, cyan, red, magenta, green, yellow, blue, that's the same exact thing as going into your levels and doing your red channel, pushing this to the left or right, going into your green channel, pushing this to the left or the right, and going into your blue channel and pushing this to the left or the right. Doing this with color balance literally is the exact same. I think this makes a little bit more sense in terms of the user interface here because you have your colors visually and you can simply work with your shadows, midtones, and highlights and then use these sliders. So if you're gonna be like adding some artistic coloring or some color grading to your image, I don't necessarily recommend doing that with levels or curves. I think color balance makes a lot more sense. Okay, now let's go ahead and take our color balance layer. We're gonna delete it because today is all about levels and curves, but I do wanna show you a couple more things. Okay. Now, let's say we are here with levels. I'm gonna go for my RGB, we're gonna go into our blue channel and I can take my shadows, we're gonna make these a little bit brighter and add some blues and my highlights a little bit darker and add some yellows. This is a prop popular color tone effect. So if you're interested in really changing the light levels and color levels of both your shadows and the highlights, then levels can be a good way to do this. But for most color balance, I just recommend using the color balance adjustment. So now we know the difference between curves and levels. Basically they do the exact same thing, except curves is gonna give you more options for adjusting colors or light levels there on your midpoint. And there's no right or wrong. Whichever one of these makes sense to you and you feel a little bit more intuitive, that is gonna be the tool for you. So now let's go ahead and use a combination of curves and levels along with their layer masks to enhance our image. We're gonna go ahead and reset this and we're gonna start off with our curves. So with these curves, I wanna make my subject just a little bit brighter. So we're gonna use this slider right here. There we go, our little icon. And we're gonna say, I want my subject to be a little bit brighter, but our highlights, maybe we want these to be a little bit darker. There we go. And then here in our midtones, we're gonna make those a little bit brighter as well. So it's gonna make our image brighter, but I want this kind of centered around our subject. And you know what? I also wanna make our subject's face a little bit brighter. So let's make that brighter. There we go, that's looking good. And you can always adjust any of these by clicking and dragging them down, by the way. So this looks pretty good. Now I don't necessarily want this to be visible everywhere. So what we're gonna do is click on our layer mask. I'm gonna to go to my gradient. We're gonna choose gradient up here at the top. Here in my gradient editor, I'm gonna choose black to white. And then we're gonna choose our radial gradient. We're gonna click and drag from the center outwards, just like that. And then I'm gonna make sure I click on reverse. And that's just gonna make that a little bit brighter just where our subject is. Now, again, you can change any of these at any point, point in time. If you wanna get rid of one of these points, you can simply click and drag this right off. There we go. And you can see, I can just simply change all of this. It's totally non-destructive and I can change it to look exactly like how I want. Basically just where my subject in the center of the image is. Okay, that's looking good. Now, clicking back here on our gradient, there we go. Let's go ahead and click here with our gradient tool and I wanna expand this out. So let's just click and drag and expand that out just a little bit more. All right, that's looking really good. So I've made this a little bit brighter here while protecting my highlights at the same time. You can see I brought my highlights down low so they didn't get too bright, but overall my subject is a little bit brighter. Okay, now let's go ahead and use our levels and for this I'm gonna make our sky a little bit darker on the top. So we can go ahead and take this slider. We're gonna push this over to the right hand side and then click on our levels. There with our gradient, we're gonna make sure we're selected on gradient, black to white, and I'm gonna use my linear gradient and we're just gonna click and drag from the top down. Now here I can click back here on my adjustment and I can choose how light or how dark I'd like that at any point in time. And I can go always click on my layer mask and then choose how that blends in with my image. 
Okay, so now we're getting a little bit more moody and this is kind of fun. So we've seen how curves and levels are really powerful, especially for editing your light and your dark information. Now let's go ahead and select our sky and change this color of the sky using our levels adjustment. So you can see how coloring works with levels and it'll be the same thing with curves. So first thing I need to do is make a selection of our sky. We're gonna to go to our background layer. I'm gonna go up here to select and we're gonna go down to sky. Okay, it made a really nice sky selection. However, it didn't select this area over here. Not a big deal. Let's simply go to our quick selection tool. Okay, I'm gonna make my brush a little bit larger using our open and close brackets. And I'm just gonna simply paint over there and make sure it selects our whole sky. Fantastic. So now with the sky selected, let's go up to the very top. I'm gonna to add a levels adjustment. There we go. So with our color, I'm gonna hold Alt or Option, by the way, to click on our layer mask. And I'm just gonna paint bright white with our on our layer mask, just to make sure it's visible everywhere we want it to be visible. All right, there we go, because it wasn't a perfect selection, but that's okay. All right, so now we have a levels adjustment with a layer mask that's basically just visible on the sky. So with our levels adjustment, now we know, by the way, you could totally do this with curves as well. Now we know that if I go to RGB, it's just gonna adjust my lights and my darks of the sky. But I can go, for instance, into my red channel and I can push this to the left, which is gonna add more reds, or to the right, which is gonna add more cyans. Okay, that's kind of an interesting look. I can go into my green channel and push this to the left, which is gonna be more greens. To the right, it's gonna be more blues. And I can go into my blue channel, I can push this to the left, which is gonna be more blues, and I can go to the right, which is gonna be more yellows. Now, I can also go to this icon right down here, which is gonna kind of darken the highlights a little bit and put a little yellow into those highlights. So I can work with any of these sliders if I want to. This is gonna put a little bit more magenta in my highlights, and I can go into my red, and this is gonna be a little bit more cyans in my highlights. All right, let's go ahead and pull this out just I don't know, I kind of really like that look. I think it's looking really cool. You can of course put more reds into your shadows here. So you can see but by using each one of these sliders, you're able to get some really interesting effects by editing your light point, your midpoint, and your black point. There we go, that's kind of cool. So I recommend just kind of going through each of these sliders and kind of just moving them around to see what you like the most. But I think we've really stumbled upon something kind of cool here. Let's go back to our red channel and we're just gonna kind of push that off to the right hand side. That's really cool. So there's a before and after with the sky. And you can see I've worked here with my red channel to move the midpoint. I worked here on my green channel. In fact, we didn't really do much with a green channel. Let's go to our blue channel and you can see I moved the midpoint of our blue channel and then the uh, output level of our blue channel and that's putting more yellows in the highlights. There we go. And that's a really, really interesting effect that we're able to get with coloring using our levels. And of course you can do the exact same with curves. All right, let's go ahead and turn all of these off and on so we can see what we've done today. So let's go ahead, we're gonna zoom out and just turn all of this off and right back on. And you can see we've added a little bit of more attention to my subject there in the center. We've made our sky a little bit darker on the top using levels, and then we've added some coloring to the sky using levels as well. So you can see curves and levels are extremely powerful, especially when you can use them in combination with layer masks to edit specific parts of your image. Now, I gotta say, if curves make more sense to you, go ahead and use curves. If levels make more sense, you can use levels. They basically do the exact same thing. Really the only difference is that with curves, you can create more midpoints for a little bit more control. But other than that, they're literally the exact same. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow where we show you how to change any color in Photoshop. Bye everyone.